Hey painters! I'm Jenny. This is Hachi. We're with Vango. I know we're painting a cat today, but my cat is super shy and old and she spends all of her time on my bed upstairs. So today Hachi just happened to walk by just as we were starting filming and I thought I would introduce Hachi. So he's a Shiba Inu and they are a lot like cats. <laughs> they like to groom themselves and keep really clean and they usually don't like to be held or cuddled. Right Hachi? You don't like that. Let's put you aside. Good boy! Good boy! Okay, so today we're going to be painting the purple kitty. Let me scoot my chair up a little bit. Let me put the painting right in front of the screen. That's really cute. There we go. So this kitty cat, um, I gave you guys in your kit, you have enough colors to where you could paint your kitty orange by mixing the pink and yellow. It kind of makes a coral color. Or you could paint a blue kitty, or you could paint a black kitty, or you could paint a white kitty with a different color background. Just trying to think. All kinds of different colors. You could do a one color cat with some different colored splotches. That's what my cat looks like. She's white, and then she has like black splotch around her ear, and she has like kind of a blackish brown one over here, and then her tail has little splotches, but this will be really fun. This painting is super easy to do and I'll guide you through every step of the way. So let's take a look at our supplies. We have our 11 by 14 canvas, which came in your kit and you will need, I guess I need to grab one, either a paper towel or an old paint rag. My old rag got so covered with paint that it doesn't even absorb water anymore because it's literally just crusted with paint. <laughs> So you'll have your, your rag or your towel, paper towel, an old cup or mug that you can use to wash your brush, and then our paint. So in your kit, you have six colors. The colors that we use the most of if you're gonna do your cat in this color blend with the purple and blue background, purple cat, blue background. You'll need these three colors mostly, and then these three are just accent colors. So the eyes are done in the uh, yellow, and then we do some outlining in black, and then the nose and tongue are done with pink mixed with a little white. Oh, and the inner ears are also done with pink mixed with a little white. But keep in mind, you can give your cat whatever sort of color formulation you want. <laughs> All right, let's look at our brushes. We should have th three or four of different sizes. Mainly I want a big brush, a middle brush, and a small brush. So when I'm teaching kids at Vango on the stage, I always just refer to them as dad, mom, and baby. You can refer to them however you like, whatever helps you remember. Just you want, you want big, medium, and small. And let's go ahead to start, let's pick up, let's pick up the mom brush. And I'm gonna actually have us mix our background color. So if you're going to do this background, it's the blue and white mixed together. So I just scrape some white to the middle and then scrape some blue over to it. Mix them together until you get a blue you like. You might like yours really light, or you might like yours more on the uh, darker blue side. One other color, if you wanted to add this a little pink into there, you can get kind of a lavender, but you don't want, if you're gonna do a purple cat, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, you could mix a tiny bit of yellow in here. Let's see what that does. Ooh, then I get a cool green. Either way, you guys do whatever color you like. So now I'm going to using my background color, draw the cat out, which I know seems funny because the cat is not blue, but trust me on this, it works good if we draw the cat shape out and then paint the background around it. And uh, then when we start painting the cat in with purple, it's easier and things don't smear together. So let's talk about the shape of this cat. When I teach it at Vine Go, I tell the kids, we're gonna draw a ghost. That's what it looks like. So it's just gonna be this like rounded shape, like, like a kid wearing a sheet <laughs> as a ghost costume. Then we add ears, so little triangles. They can be tall or short. And then we add a tail that comes up the side and just sort of hooks over. So on this side, we wanna leave a little bit of extra room. This side doesn't need as much. So how about this? Let's make a couple marker points. 
So let's go ahead and dip your brush in your background color, whatever that is. Oh, Hachi's decided to stay in here. He's laying on the couch back here. So let's let's leave, make a mark and leave enough space for a tail. So probably, if I were to guess, it's probably an inch and a half to two inches in where we start the cat. So right about there, I make a mark. You can always change it. Everything gets painted over, so you're never locked into anything. And then over here, I'm just gonna go maybe the width of the brush. So if you like using units of measure, I'd say it's about a quarter of an inch. And now I wanna make, mark off where the top of the head is gonna come. So it's above, this is about the middle of the canvas, and it's above the middle of the canvas by a couple inches. So I just sort of eyeball it, maybe right about there. That's gonna be about the top of my cat's head. <laughs> so we don't wanna make a triangle or your cat's gonna have a triangle face, which would be kind of funny. <laughs> I'm gonna draw it with the skinny edge of the brush. Think about this as we're drawing a ghost. So it's gonna come up and then it's gonna round over. And then this one's gonna come up and meet it. Keep in mind you can change the shape because everything we have here gets painted over. So I could, you know, if I figured out, oh, it's a little lopsided, I can change that. It's real easy to do. Now I'm gonna draw the ears. So I like this, it's, it's like a lopsided ghost, but it's gonna work. And the ears, you can make real short little pointy triangles or you can make taller ones. It looks like Tanya, when she did, she's one of my artists, one of my um, employees at the studio, she made nice, cute, tall triangle ears, which I think is adorable. You don't wanna make them like so tall that it, people would look at it and think it's a bat though. This is probably about right. Unless you want, you know, this cat, this cat could very easily become a bat. So if you're thinking you want a bat painting, go ahead. It's your painting. And then I'm gonna make the other. Let's talk about what other animals this could become. So this could also be a pig. <laughs> Anything pretty much with pointy ears, pig, bat. Maybe you guys could suggest some other animals in the comments below, but there's lots of different directions this painting could go. If I made it have little tiny rounded ears, if we could turn it into a raccoon. All right, now I'm gonna draw the tail and there's no space between here and the tail. The tail just kind of comes out part way up, comes out of the side there. I'm gonna draw this side first and I'm gonna come up and I'm just gonna draw it like a candy cane shape. It's gonna come up all the way up close to the top of the canvas and just sort of hook over. And then I'll show you how to draw the other part. So right about here, you can make a dot. And I'm just gonna go up, pretend you're drawing a big blue candy cane. There we go, hook over. There's my big blue candy cane. Now you can, you know, bring it in more if you want. If you wanna really like curl it in there, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and draw the other part of the tail. So it's gonna come out right about here. And up, just parallel that first candy cane line. It's gonna curve over like that. Remember, if you need to fix anything, it's super easy to do because everything gets painted over. So you could redraw the tail and nobody would ever know, except for me. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna make this little rounded tail. Perfect, that works. It looks more like a cat now. So my next step now will be just to paint the background. We're gonna leave the cat, the, the cat, the ghost, the ears and the tail are gonna stay white, but we wanna use a bigger brush to fill everything in. So we're gonna use a dab brush. Let's give mom a bath. When I clean the brushes, I brush it lightly across the bottom of the cup. You don't wanna jab up and down because that'll make your bristles fray out. So I just brush it lightly across the bottom of the cup like I'm painting back and forth on a canvas and then dry it off. And I'm gonna take a little sip of my coffee before it goes cold. I made a little coffee earlier and I figured I would have some during the class. I know you guys probably think coffee's gross. Unless it's Starbucks, they make all those sweet good coffees. <laughs> Okay, dad brush here, and let's go ahead and give dad a bath. Just dip the brush, kind of brush it across the bottom of the cup, dip it in the water cup and brush it across the bottom, and then dry it off. And we're gonna take our light blue color or whatever color you decided your background would be, 
And let's go ahead and fill in around the cat. Leave the cat white, but it's totally fine if you accidentally paint background color into your cat. We're gonna paint the cat color on top of everything else. So it's really easy to fix if you accidentally do that. And I usually do. <laughs> it's hard to, to not do that. Decide which brush works for you. Like you might find it's easier to use a smaller brush to get down in some of these areas and around the ears. I have a flat brush, that's my dad brush. So I, a lot of times I'll utilize the skinny edge of this just by turning it different directions. Painting around. Take your time. And you don't have to use really super thick paint here. It can be a, a thin coat because this paint's really opaque and opaque means you can't really see through it when you paint it on. Where some paints, some colors, some of the darker colors especially, you have to give an extra coat of paint or use a little bit thicker paint in order to get good coverage. But this pool blue color is awesome. And especially if you mix it with white, it becomes really, really, really opaque. So the opposite of opaque is transparent. There's a lot of shapes to paint around here. And it really doesn't matter where you start when you paint around the shapes. You could start way down here or around the ears. I kind of just went for this area. Just whatever gets you to the point that you have the whole thing colored in. Oh, my canvas has a dent in it. You know, every once in a while, the canvases will have like a, a dent or something where the got out of shape and shipping or something like that. And adding paint on it, it just needs, it needs some fluid and when the paint, the paint is, adds moisture, and then when it dries, it usually will stretch right back out again. I had one the other day that came in so dented, and I thought, this is never going to be able to be fixed. And I just, it was just a blank canvas. And I sprinkled the dented area with some water on both the front and back. And then I put it in front of my fireplace for, I don't know, five minutes or so, till it could just get warmed up and dry and it made it back to completely flat and perfect. I discovered that by accident actually years ago. I had a painting in my trunk and it uh, <laughs> another canvas had got stacked on top of it and then I think in driving they sort of shifted around and the corner of the canvas that was on top of it kind of gouged in and left this really sharp dent in the painting that was underneath and it was raining outside and I was actually going to the studio and I didn't have an umbrella and I had to walk a little distance and so I pulled the canvas out and used it as an umbrella <laughs> and walked into the studio and then I set it down and a little while later I went to move it and I saw that it had gone right back to its normal shape and that is only because of the water and the drying so that was a fun little accidental learning lesson for me. The worst damage that some of our paintings have taken is they've fallen off the wall in the studio occasionally. A lot of times like if uh, someone opens the door and a gust of wind comes in, it'll knock some of them off. And they've gotten a hole in them. <laughs> and. Usually when that happens, we just put tape on the back of the canvas and you can even paint over the patch where the hole is and nobody will ever really know unless they look at the back of the canvas. And apparently one of the artists on TV has some way of fixing that, but I still need to watch and see how you fix a hole in the canvas. There, that's looking pretty good. Blue sky behind my kitty. And this is where if I want, I could reshape the kitty. Like down here, it kind of blobs out just a little. 
Just shave down a bit. <laughs> give the kitty a little shave job. We don't want to do that. I don't know if you've ever tried to give a cat a haircut. You never should. Unless for some reason they, uh, you know, got into some, something bad like pitch or something like that. I can't imagine my cat would just freak out if we tried to shave her. But I have seen people do it before. <laughs> That's a lot of bravery. Don't get any ideas. Please don't shave your cat. <laughs> All right, I got a little, few little crusty bits of paint on there, which I'll sweep off with my finger. That looks pretty good. Down in here, I'm not gonna worry about because it's gonna have purple and then it's gonna be outlined with black. Um, one thing I'll probably show you guys because this painting goes pretty fast. I think it'd be fun to, to do some decorations in the background because why not? We have a lot of space to put some decorations on. In fact, let me grab a painting that I have behind me. This is a, another class that's coming up. Sorry, my chair is noisy. This is the, the Cosmic Unicorn. And see how it's got fun little swirls and things in the background? We could do that with the cat painting because it's a painting and it's ours. We're designing it as we go. We can do whatever we want. So I wanna show you that. So we'll have that lesson up. I'm probably gonna be filming it next today. All right, let's talk about kitty color. This needs to dry before we do any decorations, but we can color in our cat for sure. Now's where you get to choose colors. I am going to go with what the original is, which is the purple cat, but you can do a pink cat. I would recommend mixing white with this because this color on its own is very, very transparent. If you mix white with it, it's gonna make a nice bubblegum pink and it's going to be more opaque and not transparent. But if you're gonna do the purple cat with me, we actually do blend a little white into that. Go ahead and stir some white in so it turns it, it's still violet, but it's it's also got a little bit of a lavender tone to it. What we're doing here is exactly what I've been talking about. We are making the painting be less see-through. We're making the paint be less see-through by adding white to it. And it just makes things look way better. <laughs> So you can make it lighter than this. You can make more of a pale lavender, or you can make it on the darker side. We need probably about this much paint that I mixed together. And you know what? Let's just start with the main body of the cat. Up and down. Here, I'll get the middle area, and then we'll just be more careful around the edges. When you're painting just the middle area and down here on the bottom, you can, uh, you don't have to be as careful. It's when you get near the blue <laughs> that you have to start being careful. But for this part, let's just have fun. Experiment with different directions of your paintbrush. You can go up and down. You can go side to side. You can go diagonal. You can draw little X's and then smooth them out. I tend to just like to go up and down. We have a Halloween version of this painting that has a black kitty. It might have an orange background, I can't remember. I love Halloween. I love the paintings we put out at Halloween, especially the kids' paintings. They're really fun. So I'm gonna start being a little more careful now. As I get out here, use the skinny edge of my brush. See how I, I can use this real thin edge and just trace along and outline the cat. And then I sort of border it off from the background. It's a little easier to not paint into the background as much. Along the top of the head. And here, I'll just go along here, just outlining using that thin edge of my brush, or you could use a round brush, it'll do the same thing. This kind of looks like years ago when I was little. So you guys know McDonald's. And they may even still have this as a character. 
But we had Ronald McDonald, obviously, the clown guy. But there were also all these other characters. And this one that looked like this, his name was Grimace. I don't really know why. I think he just had a funny facial expression. And this is what it's reminding me of because he was just a big ghost shape <laughs> in purple. I don't know if that's still a thing at McDonald's. Grimace, and then there was a character called the Hamburglar. That he wore a robber mask and black and white stripes and he would steal all the hamburgers. Funny. <laughs> okay, so I think I want to switch down to the mom brush now to get these smaller areas. So dad, let's give dad a bath. Wash the brush off, brush it back and forth across the bottom of the cup. No poking up and down. Just back and forth like you're painting across the canvas. And dry the brush off really good. Just dry it, just brush it on your paper towel to dry it off. I see I got a little purple splotches on here and that happens to me all the time. And it's probably just the paint just flicks off of the brush. A lot of times I can just use my finger and scrape it off. I can scrape it off. I got one over here too. I can scrape it off enough that I could come back and touch it up. So if that happens to you, scrape it off or let it dry and then go back and touch it up. Okay, mom brush is up for work now. So that's my middle size brush. You might have a round one, you might have a flat one. Either one works. Let's dip it in purple. And let's paint these ears. So first, I like to trace, outline them. Bordering it off. And then I can fill in the middle. Just carefully, carefully filling that in. We're gonna paint pink in her ears. So these aren't gonna just stay just plain old purple. They will have a little purple showing. But for the most part, they'll be, a large part of them will be pink. My cat upstairs, my old girl, she has, the inside of her ears are pink. She's a very sweet cat. I think I told you earlier, she's 15 and she's super healthy and plump and she loves to eat and she just loves her space up there. She doesn't care for the dogs too much and she doesn't care to move around a lot. She just sleeps on my bed all day long, living the dream. So that's kind of like her domain. All right, painting the inside, or the, yeah, the inside part of the ears here. Okay, now I've got the tail to paint and I need to mix a tiny bit more color, not a whole lot. It's okay if you make a darker purple or lighter purple or whatever color you're using for the tail. It can be a slightly different color. And I'll just start down here where it's nice and big. So we want to use either a medium or large brush here. As you get up to the tip of the tail, you might switch to one of your smaller brushes just because it is a smaller area. And I'm gonna make this tail join up with the cat right here. When we outline everything with black later, it won't look like it's just growing out of the side of the cat. It will look like it's actually separated. It's not some weird growth. It's a tail. You might outline Here's what I like to do. I work my way up and I'll just outline like up part of the way. Then I'll fill that in. And then when I get up there, outline the rest of it and fill it in. Take your time. There's no rush here. And remember, you can pause this video anytime if you feel like my te teaching it is a little faster than you feel comfortable painting. Please pause it. Usually I kill time by walking around and looking at all my students' paintings and offering help if needed or just offering compliments. But I can't do that here. <laughs> so 
I can't see your guys' paintings. I've got a spot where I went over the into the background a little bit, but I don't think it's going to really be noticeable. So I'm going to leave it. And now as I get up here, I'm going to outline some more. If you have a flat brush like mine, you'll use the skinny edge for that. Get a nice thin line that way. And go along here. And, oh, this little curve. There. Great. I'm ready to fill in the rest of that. So I've been filming kids' videos all week long, and it's been really fun. Today, I think I'm filming like three of them. Just to get them, there's a lot of kits that have shipped out, and the paintings hadn't been posted yet. So I feel like, ah, those kids, they probably want to do their paintings. I need to get these videos filmed. I'll show you the one I just taught right before this one. It's super cute. So you keep working on filling in your cat. I'm gonna grab, maybe I already did show you, I can't remember. This was what we did. We did the ocean scene with the starfish, blue crab, and sand dollar. And I'll be doing the unicorn next, I think. So if you feel like the ears or anything else here needs a second coat of paint. Once you get the tail done, that's the time to do that because these will have dried enough that a second coat of paint will stick to it just perfectly. And this helps make it turn so it's not so transparent. It's gonna be opaque. And if you need to give anything else another coat, you can put me on pause and go through, catch up. I think I'm gonna, I've got a couple bare spots down here where I can see some of the canvas through. Oh, that's a different color. Let's try again. a little better. I've got some spots where if you ever have this where you get little dried chunks of paint you can pick them off with your fingernail and some paints acrylic paint is one of these that it will dry in the bottle a little bit and you'll get these little these little bits of it looks like tiny pieces of plastic but it's just dried paint. It can add a cool texture or you can just pick it right off and then paint over the spot you picked it off of. There, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna let it dry because I wanna be able to come back and paint the face on, on a dry cat. And now I, I was gonna show you how to do some of the fun stuff in the background. You don't have to do it. You can leave your background just as it is. Some people like it just without anything extra added to it. But if you feel like you wanna do something fun, I'll show you some fun things, give you some ideas. So in the past, what we've done is we painted a sun in yellow with the, the sun rays coming off of it. Um, we've painted white little puffy clouds Anything like that would be really cute. I am feeling a little whimsical today, kind of like the way this unicorn painting is very whimsical. And I'm gonna do some little spirals and some dots, maybe even some stars. You could do all kinds of shapes. You could make a kite in the sky, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna take my baby brush. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the water and then dry it on the towel so it starts off slightly moist. That's always good because it makes the brush real flexible and kind of glues the bristles together. I'm gonna mix white and pink. We're gonna be using this color later anyways. You may end up having to remix it because it dries fast. And I'm going to do some spirals. So I start in the middle, real light pressure. You don't wanna push super hard. What are other things we could put in here? You could do little kitty paw prints. Maybe I'll show you how to do some of those. 
Now you decide how many decorations you want. Um, let's, let's do kitty paw prints. Maybe I'll do them in purple to match my kitty, but I'll just use the dark purple, the one that doesn't have the white mixed in it. And to do a kitty paw print, you just paint a little circle. It's about the diameter of like a pencil eraser or a tiny round candy. It's about the diameter of a Skittle. And then I do three little dots above that. Isn't that cute? I don't know about your cat, but this cat can apparently walk all over the sky. <laughs> Three little bean toes. If you ever look at the bot, if you have a cat, and you, if you ever look at the bottom of your cat's feet, their little toes look like pink jelly beans. <laughs> some of them have black ones though. Some look like black jelly beans. There, I've got a good selection of purple paw prints. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. So cute. You know, I feel like I wanna use some yellow. What could I do in yellow? You know, maybe I'll just do some dots. So I like to use the handle of the baby brush and I just stamp it right in the yellow paint and I just do little dots, little polka dots everywhere. Wow, this is a fun background. See how we turned it? We turned it from just being a plain sky blue to something much more fun. Let's just say this is confetti. Somebody's throwing a little paw print confetti and yellow dots and pink spirals. It's a kitty party. It is, it's kind of, we're having our own little kitty painting party. Now I could wipe off the handle of the brush. You always want to do that. Anytime you do the dot thing, before this paint dries, wipe it off on your towel. Just squeeze the towel right around it. And then I could use white. And I could do little white confettis too, or dots, stars, whatever you want them to be. Allergens. <laughs> Reminds me of the cotton that fly, floats around in the sky out here in Oregon, um, starting in like summer. Makes everybody sneeze from the cottonwood trees. All right, that was fun. And keep in mind, you could keep going. You could paint little rainbows in the sky. We don't really have rainbow colors, but we have close. We have the pink, we have yellow, we have blue. You can make green by mixing blue and yellow. And then we have purple. So paint little rainbows that are just different colors if you want. You can paint different colored spirals. You can keep adding. You can paint different color paw prints. You can keep going and going, and even after the video is done, if you want to add more uh, fun stuff to your background, please do. But I'm gonna have us move along, and we're gonna paint the light pink. There's some something on this painting. I think it was dried paint. We're gonna paint these light pink triangles on the inside of the ears, and then we're gonna paint the nose, which is, it's like a wide upside down triangle. And I'll show you how to do all of that and uh, then we'll paint the eyes and it's gonna be fun. You know, actually thinking about how we're working here and the order we go and how we need to outline things, I think I'm gonna actually have us paint these big round eyes first. Now I'll show you different eyes you could paint. So this kitty has round eyes, but I know my kitty has really big lemon shaped eyes like that. So all I do to draw that is I make a rainbow shape and then a smile underneath. It's a rainbow smile. And then their eyes are, you know, you can do a round, like this kind of round eye. Or you can do like my cat, sometimes her eyes look like this. It's like a leaf shape. I'll fill that in. The round shape is definitely the easiest. Just like a big, a little bit bigger than a quarter and then another circle inside of it, which we'll do in black. So don't worry about this little circle in the center. We're first gonna paint just 
the circle and fill it in. Or if you're doing the lemon shape, you can do that. But important color here. Let's decide what color we want to do the eyes. I think um, I'm actually going to not do yellow eyes. I'm going to be a little different here. If you use yellow, you'll want to mix a little white with it. So it just lightens it up just a little bit. That's the yellow that Tanya used to paint the round circle eyes. Now, uh, having the white mixed with it helps it show up over the purple a little bit better. So this is like the color of like lemon yogurt, but don't taste it. It doesn't taste like lemon yogurt at all. It tastes probably disgusting. Now, if you want to do green eyes, my cat has green eyes, so I'd mix a little blue in there. And look at that. Suddenly I have this really pretty green. And that was just yellow, white, and a little blue. You decide what color eyes you want your kitty cat to have. And then I'm going to do the round eyes because like I said, they're a little easier. Let's have a look where they're placed at. They're just down, like kind of lined up with here and here. But it really doesn't matter. You can do the eyes lined up anywhere you want. And they're a little bit bigger than a quarter Maybe about the size of a half dollar, which I don't see very many of those anymore. And I just try to match the other one up in size. <laughs> it's never going to be perfect. But you know, even like the human body, our two sides are not symmetrical. Like I have one earlobe that's bigger than the other. I have one eyelid that's bigger than the other. So even like our own human design is not exactly perfect symmetrical. So why do we need to make our cats that way? We don't. Let's fill this eye in. So our cat's gonna be staring at us <laughs> with really blank eyes for a while. Kind of creepy. So if we didn't have the ears, it would really look like a ghost <laughs> or some kind of weird alien. I think this face is really funny and gosh, I love this green color. That is so cool. The yellow is cool too, and I see a lot of cats with yellow eyes. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, they're, they're not exactly the same roundness. They're not exactly the same size, but we don't have to worry about that. Just get it as close as you can. I was using the baby brush. I don't know if I said that. I'll say it now, baby brush. <laughs> let's mix up a light, light pink now. So let's look at how pale the pink is here. It's really light, which means Tony added a lot of white to the pink. And I already have some pink here, so I'll just pull more white into it. I don't think it matters if you have a darker pink or a light pink, but I usually like to not deviate from the original too much, although look at what I've done. <laughs> I can't help myself. I like to show you guys different ideas because I think it's really important to know that you can be really creative and you don't have to stick with what is, you know, in the original painting, you can make it your own, which is very, very good to do. So I want to do smaller triangles inside the ears. So I'll just draw, I just out, like I basically parallel these outside edges and then back along here, close it off. And now I have this little cute shape to fill in like that. One more to do. Thank goodness they don't have four ears. Thank goodness they don't have four eyes. That would be crazy. Actually, I've been kind of toying with an idea and you guys maybe could let me know in the comments if you think this is a good idea or if you think it would be too spooky. I was thinking about doing a cute fuzzy spider painting. I've got one somewhere um, that would have lots of eyes. <laughs> but the spiders are really, really cute when they're fuzzy and um, I wouldn't necessarily want to hold or cuddle one, but they make really cute paintings. I've done a bunch of them in watercolor and it, I was looking around. I have one, it's like kind of pinned up on the wall though, so I'm not gonna get up and grab it. Maybe I'll do that. We'll do a, a cute fuzzy spider. I'm deathly afraid of spiders. So if I see one in the room, I practically have a panic attack. 
and uh, have to get it out, have someone help me get it out. So by painting them cute and fuzzy, <clears throat> I'm trying to overcome that fear. <laughs> so far, I still get scared when I see them. <laughs> ah, coffee's gone cold, I'll set that aside. Okay, let's do the nose. So the nose is, it's like a triangle, it's turned upside down, and it's wide, it's a wide fat triangle. So I'll, I'll first draw a slightly curved top, and then it's gonna go down to a point. Sometimes it's easy to just draw three dots and connect the dots. Oh, I've smeared a couple things here. Let's see, how close to the eyes? They're just below the eyes. Oh, let's make a dot here and a dot here, so now it really looks like a weird alien. Crazy! <laughs> Let's make a third dot in the middle, but down a little lower. And wow, now it looks really strange. Now I'm gonna connect those. I do a slightly rounded line, but it could go straight across too. It's not gonna be a big deal. And back down to that point, although I went a little lower. I guess my, my brain wanted it to, the nose to go down a little lower. And then I'll fill that in. And your nose on your cat could be black. It could be a darker pink. I kind of like a little darker pink. I might actually, because we put a shine in white on the nose later, and I think it will show up really good if I make this a little bit darker tone. By darker, I just mean a little more pink, less white. I'm just going over it. And I mean, in nature, we've never seen purple cats, so if you want to give yours a, a blue nose, or a yellow nose, or green nose, you can, there's no rules. We're painting, we're creating our cat. All right, I'm gonna wash that brush off, and yeah, we're gonna wash the brush off. And we're going to paint either spots or stripes, some kind of pattern on your kitty. Remember earlier I was telling you how you could do like a big splotch, like my cat has a black on one side that kind of comes down, it meets up to her eye and comes below. And then her ears, inner ears are pink, but all around that whole spot splotch is filled in with black. And then the other colors like brown and black together. I think they call that brindle. I'll go ahead and give the kitty cat little tiger stripes. I think that's really cute. I always had tabby cats growing up and it's kind of fun to have a purple tabby cat. <laughs> and you could do polka dots. You can make your cat polka dotted. Really whatever, whatever your heart's content. Whatever your heart is telling you to paint. Now we did this, if you're doing the purple cat, we remember we mixed white and we lightened this up. Now we want to use the dark purple because this is going to show up really good. And I want to use my middle brush, which is mom. Time for mom to go to work again. And dry it off really good. Clean it off, dry it off. Dip it right in the dark purple if you're going to do purple stripes. If you're, you have a yellow cat, you could do black stripes. You could do pink stripes. Like the dark pink would look cool any color that you have on your palette. But I'll do one right in the middle. It's just gonna come straight down and it's gonna end before I get to the eyes. Then I'll do one on the other side here. Then I'll do one on the other side here. So I have three. If you can fit more across here, then go for it. And then they have little stripes that come like down here, so they're gonna come part way across. And I'll just do another one. And I can fit one more. And on the other side, I just try to match them up, but it doesn't have to be exact. You can do this with a round brush too. They don't have to be this shape. They can be little skinny stripes. It'd be really cute, actually. If you want, um, I know a lot of times tabby cats have stripes that come in on either side of their face. I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna use the skinny edge of this 
And I'm just gonna do like three, one, two, three little skinny lines that come in from the side on either side of the face. Right now they kind of look like whiskers, but we're actually gonna add whiskers later. So at that point, they all look more like they're a pattern on the cat. Let's add stripes to the tail. All my tabby cats had striped tail. You know what this cat reminds me of? It reminds me of the Cheshire cat on Alice in Wonderland, because it, it was like purpley, I think, with stripes. It'd be fun to do this painting with a big Cheshire cat smile, but you know, I don't want to deviate too far from the original lesson. <laughs> well, I want to, but I don't think it's a good idea. I think that I should teach you pretty much what you ordered. But yes, deep down, I really want to make a Cheshire cat smile. I'm gonna fight the urge. There. Cute stripey tail. Looks like I'd fit one more here. That's turning out way cute. I love it. I love it. I think we're ready now to, this is, the eyes are probably dry. We are probably ready to paint the eyeballs. They're just round and they're just centered in the middle of the circle eye. Or remember I showed you earlier, you can do the more slitted eye, which is kind of the leaf shape. Sometimes, so your cat's in the dark, the, their um, pupil, that's the black part, the pupil will, um, and it happens to humans too, in the dark, they get real big. <laughs> and then like, if you've ever seen your cat looking up at you and there's sun shining in its face, they're like teeny little slits. I want to use the baby brush for this. We need small, fine brush strokes here. And clean it off if it needs it, dry it off. And here's what I like to do. If you're using a round brush, I like to just sort of pinch the bristles together to make a nice little fine point. And finally, we're gonna use black. Unless you made a black cat, <laughs> then you've already used black. You could do a gray cat too. I didn't think, I don't even think I mentioned that, but you totally could do black and white, make a gray cat, why not? Paint another cat. Maybe you have a piece of paper and you've got some paint left. You know how to paint a cat now, so paint a whole litter of cats if you want. I'm gonna paint a little marble-sized circle in black in the middle of the eye. I'm not pushing very hard because I'm doing such fine outlines. If you push really hard, you're gonna get real blobby outlines. And it's just something you learn along the way. So you might, you know, just take some practice to learn to not push super hard. That looks crazy. Let's fill it in. Much better. <laughs> Cat looks a little surprised. But you know, it's gonna look surprised for a while till we give it a mouth and make it smile. And it's going to look like it's just surprised and happy. <laughs> All right, other pupil here. Just try to match it up. Take your time and fill it in with black. Awesome. Now, most cats and dogs and other animals like bears and raccoons, they have, so where we have pink um, in our, around our eyes, they have black. It looks like black eyeliner and they just have it by nature, those lucky ducks. They don't have to put on makeup, it's already there. Some cats, so I'm gonna outline this in, what, I'm, what I was getting at, I'm outlining this in black and I'm pushing very, very light. The lightest pressure you can possibly push on here. Super duper light. Take your time as you go around. Super light pressure. If you mess up and, and uh, you know, you have to redo an eye, here's what you want to do. Let it dry or hair dry it, have your parent help you. And then come back, paint over it, if that's what needs to happen, and start again with the eye. You can always paint over and over and over and over. I could paint over this whole entire canvas with white and start again and do a whole new cat. So keep that in mind, everything is fixable. You don't have to worry that you're stuck or locked into something if you accidentally made a little boo-boo. Everything is fixable. And sometimes over the years, 
little mistakes I've made I've left and I thought I'm glad I made that mistake because it really turned out kind of cool. <laughs> okay so let's outline the other eye now. Outlining is a little hard around something small like this. I think when we outline the whole cat in black it's going to be easier but these small little parts are a little more complicated. Sometimes I'll add a teeny drop of water to the black paint just to make it a little more fluid. But you don't want too much because you could end up with black tears running off your cat. My cat has one eye that is outlined in black, like this. And then her other eye is pink. So the, the rim around her eye is pink like mine. I think she was undecided, apparently. <laughs> Whew, outlining is a little stressful, but we can do it. And you know the cool thing is, I could go back in with the green, after all this black dries, I could go back in with the green and kind of clean up any areas that like right here where it maybe got a little thick, but I don't have to. I think I'm, I'm fine with it. If you want to give your cat little eyelashes, how about I show you that? I know a lot of you like to do that. And we have a purple cat, so it can have eyelashes if it wants to. Little brush, black paint, and I literally just do like three eyelashes at the corner of each eye that just flick outward. Oh, one sort of ended up wonky. We'll fix that. There. That's cute. Now we'll make the mouth, and let's have a look at the mouth. Easy. Easy peasy. So the mouth comes straight down and then it hooks on one side so it makes like a J shape. And then we do a backwards J on this side. And then we get to do a little tongue. But we're going to wait to do the tongue because we want it to dry a bit. So here's where I want to use the baby brush. I am going to mix one drop of water with some of the paint to just make it more fluid and easier to work with. Not drippy water, but oh, look at that. I painted my, I must have, I think I put my arm in one of these. That happens all the time. And then I got a little mole. My cat has a little purple mole. <laughs> a beauty mark. So from the middle of the lower part of the nose goes a little short line straight down. Very light pressure. You don't need to push hard. And then I'm going to carefully hook over this way. Make a big wide smile. And then I'm gonna go the opposite direction, make a big wide smile. Light pressure. <laughs> I like it, I think that's really cute. We'll add more to the face. We're gonna add some, the tongue and some highlights and whiskers. But for now, let's let it dry because we don't wanna overwork an area that's uh, still really wet. Okay, I'm still gonna be using black and I'm still gonna be using my baby brush. We're gonna outline the whole cat. Let's show you what it looks like. So we start down here, we're gonna come up, we just outline the ears. You don't need to go across here. We're gonna outline just the ears. Cross the top of the head, here, and down, and then the whole tail. Now notice the outlines are thicker, which means you can press a little harder. You don't have to be so careful as you were around the eyes and with the mouth. And if you don't want solid black, to me it looks like Tanya probably mixed purple and black together. So it makes sort of a off black. Not quite black, not quite gray, just somewhere in between. And uh, let's do it. Let's do it. We can do it. So I'll, I'll do what she did. I'll mix purple. I've got some purple left, so why not? You know, I'm just going to bring some black over here. You can see the black really overpowers the purple. So it's making a color that's not quite black and it's not quite gray. It's off black. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to poke my brush in the water and I'm going to add two drops of water. Stir that in. I'll show you a trick too. So when we mix paint like this, we end up with a huge globby amount on our brush. Here's what you can do. You can just kind of twist and pull your brush. And that knocks off any excess paint. And then I'll just sort of redip the tip of the bristles in, the blackish, blackish color. And I'll start here, like I said, I'm gonna carefully go up. Remember, you don't have to 
You don't have to like be super light pressure like you did there. And your, your brush will run out of paint part way up. I'm gonna stop at the base of the ear. Touch up any spots that need touch up. Now, instead of going like that, if you accidentally do, it's going to be fine. It'll just look like a little more, you know, cartoony outline. But if you remember not to, you can just go right up the ear and back down and see how imperfect my outlines are. I've got wobbly lines. I'm not gonna worry about it because it's not a photograph. This is a painting. This is hand painted. There's some beauty to things that are hand painted. I used to have some um, coffee mugs or tea mugs that were hand painted and I always loved the look of those. Cause you could see little wobbly spots and you just knew it rather than being printed from a machine. It was done by hand, which I thought was super cool. And then they broke. <laughs> Okay, there. Now I just have to come right back down. And then we just do the tail. Outlining does, especially with this sort of painting, it does really make the cat look finished off and makes it pop from the background. You can see the difference between this part and the tail, which is not outlined yet. I really like that. I like the outlining. Now for the tail, at least it's a pretty simple shape. You can choose whether you go start on the inside edge of the tail, like I just did. Maybe refresh your paint with a little drop of water. Uh, blobby. Hand painted. That's what I have to keep reminding myself. It's hand painted. There's some value to things that are hand painted. There's a famous artist who sold one of the ugliest, well, in my opinion, it's not a very attractive painting. It is called The Scream, and I'm sure you guys have seen it in pictures. It has the guy on the bridge going, and he kind of looks like an alien. That painting sold for $140 million. It was one of the most expensive paintings ever. And you know, I think the one that sold, there were several versions of it. And if I remember right, I think the one that sold was just on like cardboard. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy, but it's kind of just one of those things hand painted by someone who was known for painting that sort of thing. My dog, old dog is in here and if you can hear her, She's kind of coughing a little bit. She's got what my what the, her vet called old dog cough. <laughs> so occasionally she'll cough and wheeze and she always likes to come in here and do it. <laughs> there. Nice wobbly outlines. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I could spend all kinds of time cleaning them up, but I don't really think it's necessary because it's not exactly the easiest thing to get a perfect outline. <laughs> I got a little black dot right in the middle of the cat's eyes. <laughs> I guess it's another beauty mark. <laughs> I could scrape it off and touch it up, but sometimes those little things I'll just leave because why not? How about I show you how to do whiskers? So with whiskers, we need black paint, we need the baby brush, and we need some water mixed in that black paint. Let's pull the palette over here. So I'm gonna pull some black aside. Oh, my black is drying up a lot. And I make it pretty fluid. You don't wanna make it super gloppy drippy, but kind of like ink. And you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. So in fact, when you mix this up, you might wash your brush off and dry it off. Dry it off real good. And then use the very tip of the bristles to pick up fresh paint so you're not having a giant glob of paint on your brush. Whiskers can be easy for people or they can be a little hard. Um, these are super done super fast with super light pressure. You can do these in white or you can do them in black or you can do them in dark purple or you can do them in green or yellow or pink, whatever you like. There's three on each side. They just sort of come out around the mouth so in this area. And 
sometimes it's best to just go for it. I'll go one, oops, that didn't turn out very good. One, two, three. They go out, extend out beyond the side of the face. Other things I've done with these whiskers in the past, I've got a brush that's kind of split. <laughs> I've curled them up, like curl some curl some up and like one of these little spirals and curl one down. If you want, whimsical kitty. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. We only have a couple things left to do. Let's go ahead and give our kitty cat a tongue. Now you can use the same pink you did with the nose, or like Tanya did, you can make a little darker mix of pink. I'll make a little bit darker. So it's, it's white and the reddish pink color on your palette, but less white than you use for this guy, for the nose. And I just, I'm going to do a little U shape and fill that in. My cat doesn't stick out her tongue very often, but the other day she had, I think she had a hair on it and she kept poking her tongue out. It looks so funny. There. We're gonna let that dry while we work on some other stuff as we finish this painting off. All right, so I wanna show you highlights in the eyes and highlights on the nose. Then by the time we do that, the tongue might be dry enough to get a highlight too. And then I'll show you how to draw easy, fun little fangs, which are very cute. But let's look at the highlights in the eyes. Basically, two circles in each eye in white. The highlight on the nose is just a little shine right on top. And the highlight on the tongue is just a shine down one side. So I'll use my baby brush for all of those. Dip the tip of the bristles and pick up a little white. I'm gonna do a nice big shine here and one over here too in the same upper corner. And then I'm going to do on op the opposite side down here, a little smaller dot. And same thing here, a little smaller dot. Oh, that's so cute. So cartoony and cute. Then on the nose, I'll do a little swipe of white right across the top of it in the pink area. And the tongue is dry here. We'll do a little swipe of white down one side. And then the fangs are totally optional. They're the last step and you don't have to do them if you don't want. But I would do two like upside down triangles, pointy triangles, vampire cat. <laughs> I'll do one on the other side. So we took this painting and we stepped it up a few notches, which is okay. You can have it be like, let's see if they both fit here. You can have it be the, oh, my blue's a little darker too. You can have it be what you signed up for, what your package had, the normal, or you can go a little extra anytime. And so then it looks like I have two different cats right now that are maybe from the same family. Kind of like me and my sister. We look alike, but not exactly alike. And one last thing, we wanna sign our painting. So you can see Tanya put her name real small down here. I usually will sign it with my initials in any color you want. This is where you get to pick any, well, throughout the whole painting, you can pick any color you want, but I'm going to pick, I'm gonna sign it in pink. I like pink. And what I have done over the years is I just, I have to sign a lot of paintings because I teach a lot of paintings. And I just do my initials and I've kind of looped them into a little JS that doesn't look like an S at all. <laughs> but that's my signature and that's my painting. She's got a couple little beauty marks. She's got some sharp fangs and a really fun and funky background going on. And I hope you guys had fun too. I would love to see your paintings. If you ever wanna uh, have your parent help you, you can email them to us and we love to see them. So thank you guys so much for joining and we'll see you when we do the next video. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.
All done.